welcome. My name is Libby Van Trees, and I will be uh, sharing some information about Premiere Plus 2. This is the Mac version. Um, and so let's get started. You'll see down here in my dock that I have Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery docked here, as well as the configure screen. We're going to go to the configure icon, not screen, icon first. Um, I think this is a very important uh, piece of Premiere, so I want to make sure that you are familiar with that. The very first tab in Premiere Plus 2 Configure is um, the Utilities tab. You'll see there are other tabs up here. And from this tab, you can check your installation, you can activate your software, you can reset all apps. Typically in a class, we do ask um, that everyone reset all apps so that any special things that you have set up um, don't interfere with what your screen will look like um, for uh, the purposes of the class. Um, you can back up your settings, you can reset your file association. The most important icon on this screen is the smart update and smart update will give you any updates that have been made to Premiere. And often there are little bugs that have been fixed. Sometimes they'll add more designs, um, embroiderable designs to the uh, offering and they will download when you do the smart update. So that is a really good tool to use maybe once a month or so to make sure that you have the latest and greatest uh, version of Premiere running on your machine. Um, the second tab here is appearance. And with appearance, we can change the background color of the screen. We can change the background um, uh, texture. I'm going to take it back to woven. I did not reset all apps or that would have been woven right out of the gate. Um, and the grid color you can change as well. One of the really important pieces on this screen is this real size. And this little, looks like a ruler, should be measured on your computer with a ruler that has millimeters on it. And you'll put your number in here. Every uh, computer screen has different resolution. And if you will measure this and put the measurement here in millimeters, which are very accurate, then things will appear true size on your screen and they'll also print out in real size. So this is a, this is a tool you should do right away. Um, show measurements in millimeters or inches. Typically we embroider in millimeters and we quilt in inches. There is a way on the screen when we get in there, I will show you how to see what the inches are. The system will show it to you, but I would recommend that you stick with millimeters because you can precisely position your embroideries so much more accurately in millimeters because it is a better increment for that sort of thing. Also on the Premiere Plus 2 configure, we have import and import thread range. The default is Robeson Anton Rayon 40, meaning if I import a design, it will show up as Robeson Anton threads. I can change that by clicking on the drop down and choosing a different thread range. Um, exporting, this is where we set up what we want to happen when we export our design. So the default is that it will optimize for sewing. It'll combine multiple designs into one so that your machine can read it. If you have one design on top of another, um, perhaps you have a snowman with, and you've added a scarf, you don't need to stitch out the snowman underneath the scarf. It'll remove that overlap. Um, it will color sort for you and it will optimize your stitch lengths. It will add markers if you are planning to put sequins or uh, crystals or something like that on your design and you can choose what kind of markers. It will automatically rotate your hoop to fit the natural position, meaning that it will, um, if you've worked on your design in landscape mode or horizontal, um, it will automatically rotate that design so that it goes into the machine vertically, which is how all of our machines take our embroidery hoops. Um, if you're using a felting needle, it'll automatically flip the design over because that is how felting works. And it will also, for um, 
your exported designs, meaning you've translated it to your machine's language, it will append the phrase exported to the file name. So you'll know that you have exported it and it's ready to go. This is all about using multi multi-part hoops, which you can certainly uh, look into how to do that if you're, uh, if you're working with that sort of thing. There's also a little question mark down here, and this is um, content-specific help. So it would give you help with this screen. The last tab is connection. And if you have a MySonet enabled machine, then you can get your uh, software logged into the same internet and you can send directly to your machine. Okay, so that is configure. Let's get into Premiere Plus 2 embroidery. Go ahead and open that up. And um, this is the uh, screen that comes up when we open Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery. We're going to take a tour of that before we start to work with any designs. Um, if you look up here at the tippy top, you have your Apple, which we always have on a Mac. We have Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery, and then we have tabs. We have the File tab, the Edit tab, the View tab, the Design tab, Assistance, Window, and Help always help, there's help available. Um, if I click on Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery, the word, I can find out what version I'm on, I can change my preferences, and I can quit and or exit Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery. I'm gonna click on Preferences, and Preferences allows me to change some things if I want to. Um, the grid size is currently at 10 millimeters. That's the default. I can change that. So if I'm working with something where I'm really trying to accurately line something up, I might make my grid size smaller so that I can really see if something is parallel um, with something else and get it very, very, very accurate. It allows me to change my applique piece margins here. I can also remove any overlap. That's the default that is on, but maybe I don't want that to happen. So I could take that away. So those are the preferences. And remember I got there by doing Premiere Plus Two Embroidery, clicking there and going, going into the preferences. The file tab. The file tab lets us do a variety of things. We can open a new window of Premiere so we can have multiple windows open. I can open a design, I can open something recent. I can insert a design, I can close, I can save, I can duplicate, rename, move to, revert, print. I can print from here. So I can print out a copy of my design and the grid and actually use that printout um, to place it on a garment. Um, I can see exactly what it's gonna look like. I can also print out um, all of the colors that are gonna be used in the order and that sort of thing. I can send to the machine via my SoNet if I want to. Okay, the next tab over is edit. And this is how we work with our designs. Um, right up there at the top is undo and redo. There is no design on the screen, so that is grayed out right now, but the undo and the redo are uh, awesome tools to have because if you make changes and you go, oops, I didn't mean to do that, you can undo and you can undo all the way back to the beginning. There's no limit to how far back you can go. Sometimes we go too far and we go, Oop, let me put something back and that's a redo. Over here on the right hand side is the um, keystrokes that will do that if you don't want to have to jump into the, into the menu. Command Z is the undo. I know that command because I don't wanna to have to come up here to edit when I wanna undo, I can just do command Z and back up. Um, and so those are, those are all listed on the side. Our view tab allows us to um, change our view in various ways. Sometimes we wanna get rid of the grid because it's in our way. So you can turn it off here or turn it back on. I can load a background, meaning I can put um, a garment or something like that or different fabric behind my uh, design so I can see what it's going to look like. Um, so there are different, different things here. 
In the design tab, I can group designs, I can ungroup, I can restrict groups, I can combine, I can rotate, I can modify, I can do different things with alignment. The assistance tab are the wizards, if you will, um, that will walk you through how to do um, different things. We've got a monogram assistant, an endless assistant, an express design where we can take artwork or uh, clip art or something like that and turn it into stitches. We have photo stitch where we can turn a picture into stitches. There's a word sculpt assistant, which means that we can take a shape and then fill it with words and the assistant will help us do that. So if I were to choose a coffee cup, I could have the outline of the coffee cup and then have all the words that go with coffee inside of that cup and it'll help lay that out. The quilt block assistant allows me to quilt, put quilting stitches around an embroidery or in a block, fill an entire block with quilting. Um, there are all different settings inside of there. You can do stipple, you can do crosshatch, you can do motifs, you can do all sorts of things. Um, and the assistant will help you set all that up. There's a family tree assistant where you can develop a family tree and stitch that out. There's a project in the hoop assistant, which is um, an assistant that allows us to create projects that will be stitched out entirely in the hoop. Um, and that is a really, that's a really fun assistant. I'm actually gonna take you into that in just a moment so you can see a little bit of what's in there. Before I do that, the split project assistant, if you have an embroidery that is larger than your largest hoop, you are able to run that through the split project assistant and then stitch that design out in multiple hoopings. It helps us not be limited by the size of our hoops. Let's look at the project in the hoop assistant for just a moment. The project in the hoop assistant has a category, a style, and then sizing. And very important, it has view PDF instructions. So for every project, there are PDF instructions that will tell you when to, um, if it's an applique, when to add fabric, when to, um, when to do different pieces and parts of the design. So there are instructions, just like you get instructions with your embroidery discs when you buy them as to how, what gets stitched out when, what color comes next, that sort of thing that is in there. So for our categories, we have a book cover. So we can create a book cover in the hoop and we can put in the dimensions of the book. And I'm sure in the PDF instructions, it's gonna tell us how much to maybe allow for the spine and that sort of thing. Oh, I guess it's right here, the thickness. Um, so book cover and then the style, there are different styles. There's big title, there's diary, Gothic, Holy Bible, sketchbook and blank. So for instance, if I were to choose a different style, it gives me a preview of it and you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, most of the styles include a blank, meaning it gives you a blank book cover to design as you wish. And you can add all of your different embroideries to that. Uh, sketchbook, um, and that's all customizable. So the different categories, we have book cover, card holder, key ring, luggage tag, novelty, passport cover, and a phone case. I really like the key rings. I think they're fun to create. And then I put my USB sticks on them for my embroideries. So there's the key ring. We have all different styles. Um, there's the arrowheads was first. If I click flower, it shows me a preview. If I choose motif circle, it shows me a preview. And again, um, there are PDF instructions down here for how to do the key ring. So it will tell you when to fold the loop over in the stitch out and that sort of thing. Key rings are um, the size that they are. There is no uh, availability to change. You'll see that's grayed out um, for that. Okay, so that is the assistance. Um, and remember that was the assistance tab up at the top. We have a window tab so that we can minimize and zoom and, and uh, work with all the different 
uh, windows that we might have open. We can have multiple windows of Premiere open. So that allows us to navigate between if we would like to. And then there is help. The help will take us into, um, we can search for help. There's also a learning center out there where you can look some things up and, and learn some things, frequently asked questions and the keyboard shortcuts, which I enjoy. Okay, so that is the tab section of the screen. The next thing down is what we call our ribbon bar. And the ribbon bar gives us the opportunity to um, do a number of different things. Notice we had assistance up here. Look right here. We also have assistance right here in this drop down. They are the same. You can grab them from either place. One of the beauties of this software is that there are multiple ways to do most everything. One of the challenges of the software is there are multiple ways to do almost everything. So I recommend that whatever works well for you, you kind of land on that and continue to use it. Okay, so there are the, all of the assistants that we just talked about. Now we have actions. Um, if we click on the file menu, we had a lot of actions that we could do. Guess what? The actions uh, drop down right here allows us to, to do a lot of those same things as well. We can save from here, we can print from here, we can copy and paste and do some of those sorts of things. The next icon in the ribbon bar is my SoNet. And when I click on that, it shows me if I'm connected and whether or not I can send off to my machine if I have a MySonet enabled machine. The next area is Zoom. That allows us to zoom in on an embroidery and we will do that um, in a moment when we get an embroidery on the screen. Uh, this allows us to zoom back out, zoom in, this allows us to zoom to rectangle. I'll show you that in a moment. This puts us back to this view, the zoom to fit, where the entire hoop fits on the screen. We can also change our view by moving the zoom slider. We next have some select tools on the screen. We can box select, circle select, point select, select all. We'll get into more of that. Our select mode. We have our group, how to group embroideries resize if we want to change the size of an embroidery. We have our hoop, which allows us to change the hoop. We can change our backgrounds and we can change our view mode. We also have a life view, which is, uh, allows us to see our embroidery without the hoop and grid, which is sometimes helpful. And then we also have a design player, which allows us to actually play the design, meaning we can see it stitch out on the screen so we can see the order of events. Okay, so that is the ribbon bar. The next area of the screen is this design panel. And one of the challenges with the software um, is if I say design in a class, people don't always know whether we're talking about the design tab or the design panel. This is the design panel. And if you hover over the icons, it will tell you what they are. So this is design information. I think it looks like newspaper print um, and it will give me information about my design. The next little icon is a circle of dots and that is the Encore tab. The Encore tab allows us to create encores, meaning repeating designs um, in different shapes. So the, the default is circle. We can create an encore line. We can create encores around various shapes. We can encore around the hoop and we can have our uh, designs all go the same direction. You see a preview here, all the little leafs are going to the right. If I wanted them to um, point to each other, I could have every other design mirror, and that's the option here. I can tell it how many repeats of the design I want, and then I can tell it to group that. 
and I would preview. So that is Encore. The next icon over is lettering. This is one that people use a great deal, particularly when they uh, first start embroidering. It seems that we want to um, put lettering on towels and letterings on blankets and all different things. Um, or quilt labels is another awesome use for lettering. So when I click on lettering, the default font that comes up is the Georgia font. This is the letters box. This is where I'm going to type in my letters. I can tell it what size I want it to be. It will color sort my letters, meaning if I put in a whole phrase, it'll all stitch out with one color change, unless I tell it I don't want to. I can choose different shapes for my lettering. This is just the rectangular box, so that would be standard. If I click on the shape box, it shows me all of the different shapes my lettering can take, and I would just choose a different one. You can see that there's kind of a highlight behind the rectangle, um, meaning that is the horizontal block shape that we're using. I can select my stitch type. Um, right now it's satin column. That is the stitch type for the Georgia font, which is up at the top. Um, and I can change some options. So in order to choose the lettering that I want to use, I'm going to click on the font box, just a regular left click. It brings up my gallery of fonts. I can scroll through here. I'm just gonna quickly scroll all the way to the top. And we begin, the, the fonts are grouped by um, category. So this, these are the applique fonts, meaning I would have fabric and then stitch around them. Um, so these are all applique. As we roll down through here, we have all different fonts. These are called children. These are called display. Um, effects, elegant, floral, foam. Want to point out the foam. Uh, font. That means you can put puffy foam under the lettering, much like your collegiate sweatshirts and that sort of thing to give lettering dimension. Uh, another couple of fonts here, modern uh, monogram. These are typically used for monogram, but you can use them for other things as well. My fonts. My fonts is, um, gives you the opportunity to take any font that is on your computer in your word processing system and turn it into stitches. Um, and when you do that, they land in the My Fonts category. Um, retro, so you can see you have a lot of fonts available to you. The other thing you can do with the My Fonts um, category, if you have purchased fonts that you own, um, that you've bought on CD, you can actually import those in and they would live here in My Fonts so that you can use them by typing in a phrase or a name and having it apply rather than picking letter by letter when you're using a um, a purchased font. So if I want to use one of these fonts, oh, I like the, well, that's all, that's all uppercase. Uh, if I want to use a font, I just choose the one I want to use by clicking on it. Um, let's see here. Let's do this. So if I want to use this American Gothic font, you can tell it is both an uppercase and a lowercase font because you see the, the, the capital letters and the small letters. I choose that and I say, okay. It then puts that font into my font gallery. And if I want to add that to my, um, Hoop as a design, as stitchable letters. Oh, I started to quilt beginnings. There we go. I would type in the word that I want and click apply. It's too big for my hoop, but you can see that it's very, very easy to add lettering. Okay, so that is how we add lettering to our hoop. 
If I decide that I don't want that in there, I can just do edit and delete and take it back away. So that's our lettering tab. The next tab icon up here is our super design tab. This is really um, kind of an amazing tab in that it has embroideries that you own that you can use. So you'll see that we have category up here and right now we're on the animals category. So all of these designs are stitchable that are here. So if I wanted to stitch out the horse, I would click on the horse to highlight it. I could tell it lots of things about what I wanted to do, size, stitch type. I want it to be in color. Sometimes line is available, sepia. I'm gonna leave it as color right now. And I'm gonna say and apply. So there's my horse and it is a stitchable design. It is an embroidery. It has green handles around it. That means with super designs, I can change the size of the design by grabbing onto a corner and dragging it bigger or making it smaller and it will compensate stitches for me, which is lovely. Um, so there is how you add a design out of the super design uh, to your hoop so that you can stitch it out. I do wanna point out that for category, there are all of these different categories available to you in super designs. Right now, animals is selected, so we were only seeing the animals. But if I choose all, my animals are first because it is alphabetical again by category. But as I scroll down through here, you will see I have applique animals. I have um, lots of applique. We're still in applique right now. We've got all sorts. We have borders, all different. We have buttonholes, specialty buttonholes, two different three, I'm sorry, three different categories, four different categories of that. We have cartoon characters, faces, celebrations, um, child kind of stuff. Uh, I wanna get down here a little bit further. Corners, we had borders, we have corners for adding. We have felting effects. So there are felting designs in here for you to use. We also have twin needle uh, designs and they can be quite lovely in blending your threads. And we also have wing needle designs in the super design category. So again, you'll want to scroll through there on your own and take a look at all of the different designs that you own having purchased Premiere Plus 2 software. Okay, the next category or next icon over are frames. If I click on frames, I have all different kinds of frames that I can add to my embroidery. Um, you'll see that we have like the corner pieces here. We would have a whole frames here. Um, these are side pieces. So if I click on that icon, I can add side pieces to the end and beginning of lettering or whatever you wanted to do. And then there's also um, flourishes that can go above or below um, different things in your embroidery. So that's frames. The next category or next icon are borders. So I can put a border around things and I can choose my stitch type. I can do satin, triple, running or motif. There are options for that. I can turn things into an applique. I can have rounded or square corners, and I can also use motifs to do that with. The next icon is applique, so you can create an applique. The next one over is decoration. Decoration is for adding sequins or crystals or something to your design. You can actually add placement stitches. So if you knew exactly where you wanted a decoration to land, you can, um, put that on the screen and then it would actually um, allow you to put a stitch there so you'd know exactly where you wanted it. The last uh, icon here is modify 
And it says this will fix your selected design as embroidery stitches. Remember the super designs are um, very malleable in that you can change their size and that sort of thing. Once I say, okay, here, it turns, um, it, it sets the size of the horse and um, puts it in the modify module where I can do different things by moving colors and I can add trim commands and do all sorts of different things. Okay. So if I want to see this back in my design panel, I just go back to design. I can see my hoop. My handles have turned white on this design. Um, meaning that it, has, it is fixed as stitches at this point. If I change its size, this tells me my stitch count right here. It's 14,898. If I change the size, maybe I want a smaller horse. I can put my cursor over the corner. Notice it turned into a double-ended arrow. Hold down my left mouse and drag that in. And I can make a smaller horse. However, it did not change the number of stitches. That's a problem. You'll break a needle if you do that. So once a design has white handles, you definitely want to um, change the size by using resize. When it's a super design, have at it. You can change it as much as you want. But if I wanted to change the size of this design now, I would turn on resize, notice, whoops, sorry. You would turn on resize, notice that it is highlighted with that gray underneath. The handles have turned blue. Now, if I drag the size of that horse smaller, notice it changes my stitch count. It was 14,898, now it's 11,216. So the system will compensate the number of stitches needed. If I say, mm, I really want that back to the original, I can hold down my command key and click Z and it will undo that, that uh, size change. The other way I could have done that would have been to go up here to the edit and I could have un used the undo here. Again, it's command Z. I think that's one you wanna memorize. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about what is on the screen right now. We have a horse and we have our boxes at each corner. They are white, meaning it is fixed as stitches. So the stitch count will remain the same if I change the size, unless I use the resize button. I have a triangle at the top and on the side of the horse, of the boxes. Those are mirroring uh, options. So if I take my cursor, my pointer, and I put it over the triangle, see how it changed into a double ended arrow. If I left click, it mirrors the design and the horse is facing the other direction. The same holds true for the top one, only it will mirror it right side up and upside down. So we can stand the horse on its head if we wanted to. And I can click it again and put it back right side up. Okay, so those are your mirroring commands, allowing you to change the uh, way your design is facing. Over here on the side, the right-hand side is a circle. Notice how when I put my cursor over that, I it turns into a circle with an arrow on it. If I click and drag, I can rotate my design using that circle. So if I wanted this horse to be very upright, I could do that. Now, the rotation is around this center dot. You can see a little white dot in there with a circle in it. If I put my cursor over that, it turns into a plus and I can actually grab that and move it. And people do this all the time by accident. There are times when it would be helpful to do this, but what I've just done is instead of moving the whole design, I moved the rotation point. Now, when I go to rotate, the horse will rotate around that rotation point. There are times when you want to do that, but typically it's like, oops, I moved the circle. I didn't mean to. So the way to get it back into the design is simply to click 
off of your design. Notice nothing is selected right now. And then I'll click on the horse and the circle goes back where it belongs in the center. So um, you'll see now that I've messed with this, that the, that the corners of my design are no longer boxes, they're circles. And that means that the design is out of the work area. His little ears are out of the stitchable uh, spot in the hoop, meaning that I will not be able to export that. And it does that to um, save you from yourself. You don't want to break a needle by hitting the edge of the hoop. You have to be inside of the work area. So if I click on design, I can say move into hoop and it will automatically shove that design down just a little bit and put it inside of the hoop. Notice his ears are inside of the work area now, even though the box is outside, I have boxes at the corner, meaning that he is stitchable. He is inside of the grid area of the hoop and can be stitched out. Um, okay. So the next thing that I want to show you or point out is up here right now, it says untitled. That means I have not saved this yet. So I can come over here to file and I can click save. And notice it's going to save it as an untitled VP4. And I would want to save that in, uh, let's go here. Um, I would want to save that in a folder that I maybe make for myself. Um, let's call this. Actually, I want to save it in my designs. So I would want to come into the my designs folder. So I would click on my house. I would go to Premiere plus two. I would come into my designs and I would save it here and I'll call it course. Once I have saved the design, we, um, we have a name up here and it tells us it's horse VP4 and it shows me where it is. Okay. All right. I am going to go ahead and delete the horse off of the screen. No, no, I'm not. I'm going to open a new version of Premiere. Um, that is untitled, my horse is underneath, which is great. So now I'm going to bring this up and make him bigger. I am not clicking on the green dot up here like we normally do for a Mac, because if I do that, my file tabs will be buried and I'll have to keep bumping up top to get them back. So I like to go ahead and just move the new window up and then grab the corner and drag it full screen. I find that to be an easier way to keep access to my tabs up top. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you through just a little bit of um, how to get a design on the screen that is in your samples as opposed to in your super designs. Remember, we have all sorts of designs here. So now I'm going to, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my hoop size. So I'm going to come over here to my hoop icon and I'm going to click on it. And the brand right now is universal. Um, I, ooh, I have an inner hoop size in there, sorry. Okay, universal. You can click the drop down and choose your branded machine. And then you can actually choose a hoop that you own. Typically in class, I have everyone use the universal brand so that we're all in the exact same size when we're working and then you can change it later. So the machine group, again, um, once we, if we were to choose FOF, then I can machine group, I can choose which FOF I own and then it will show me the hoops that are available to me. But again, for most classes, I simply use universal because it makes it easier to have everyone in the same hoop. We're gonna use the 240 by 150 hoop today. 
and I want it in the natural position, which is up and down. If I choose rotated, you see that it puts it sideways. Sometimes for lettering and stuff, that's a lot easier to have it, have it sideways. I'm going back to natural and I'm gonna say, okay. So now I have a 240 by 150 hoop on the screen. Now I'm ready to insert a design out of my samples into this. I can either go to file and insert, or I can go to actions. I'm going to use actions because insert is the tippy toppy um, most expected action that we're going to do. And in order to insert a design, I need to navigate my way to Premiere Plus 2 and then my samples. So to do that, I automatically came up in samples. I want to show you how to get there. You're going to go to your home icon and then you are going to go to Premiere Plus 2. And once you're there, you have these folders that you will see. The samples file or folder is over here. Um, the README is here. README, if you've done an update, it'll tell you what it added. I, I always used to ignore the README files, but they're helpful. My designs, that's where you want to store all of your designs is in the My Designs folder. And uh, the guides, I'm going to go ahead and open that real quick. You have reference guides, sample guides, and user guides. There is extensive information in all of these. So you can look things up and read all about your software in there. OK, but we're going to samples today. I'm going to open that folder. We have samples for all of the different modules of Premiere, the Create module, the Cross Stitcher module, Finder, Modify, Photo Stitch, Premiere Plus 2 bonus designs, Premiere Plus 2 embroidery, and Premiere Plus 2 inspiration. So I'm going to open the Premiere Plus 2 embroidery design. Notice I have picture file folders, which I could use with my design wizard to create stitches, or I have stitchable files. There's a stitch folder and a stitch two. I'm opening stitch two, and I'm gonna go into butterflies and bugs. There are designs in every one of these folders, lots of them. You own tons and tons of designs. Be sure you go and explore them. I'm gonna open butterflies and bugs. And here is my designs that are in here. I'm going to choose for today, the beehive. So I'm going to, I can either click on it and click open, or I can double click it. I'm a, I'm a double clicker, but I'll do an open. And there is my little beehive on the screen. Now you can see that um, my design panel has changed. It shows me how many stitches, shows me how many colors, and it shows me the size, the width and the height. And if I look at that and go, I don't know what 55.9 millimeters is, I can hover over that and it tells me it's 2.201 inches. So when I put my cursor there, it will tell me what size. Okay, so we have our design on the screen. If I just click on it and drag, I can move it to another area. So I've got my beehive. If I want to add another design, I can go back to actions and I can insert and I can put the bumblebee on the screen as well. And so there's a very large bee for a very, very uh, small beehive. Um, the active design has the boxes around it, which are right, which is the bumblebee right now. And that's what information you will see in the screen. If I click off of the designs, it looks like I have no design information and it's simply because I have not chosen one. So I can choose the beehive. I can choose the bumblebee. If I have decided that I'm happy with this and I want to perhaps send it to my sewing machine, I want to go ahead and combine it before I do that. So I will go to design and I will do a combine all. Notice now I have a box around the entire design. I can move it as a group if I want to. Um, and if I'm going to stitch it out, I might want it to be in the middle of the hoop. I might not, I might want it up top, but if I want it in the center, 
I can click on my design tab again and say center in hoop. In order to, to put this in a file format that my machine can understand, I have to export it. Before I export it though, I'm gonna save it because I want you to see what happens. So I'm going to save file and I'm going to say save. And I am going to save this um, as Beehive and B, and I'm gonna say save. Notice now it's named. So now let's get it ready for our machine. I'm going to either go to file or actions. I know I've gone both directions and I can say export. My export screen pops up and it says, well, what file format do you want to export the file in? I'm going to come over here and I am going to select one of these file formats that works for my machine. Bernina, um, Baby Lock, and Brother do use the PES. If I have a FOF, I'm going to use the VP3. If I have a Genomi, I'm going to use the JEF. So there are all different file formats. I'm going to do the FOF for today. Notice it's going to combine it. It's going to color sort it, remove overlap, and opti optimize my stitch length. And then I'll say continue. And so now I have to tell it where I want it to export to. If I have a USB stick in, it'll show up over here and you can choose that or you can export it right onto your hard drive and then move it to a different uh, spot if you want to. So, and it added the word exported to it. Um, so, that we now have that exported uh, and I can copy it to, uh, there's the horse VP4. Um, i trying to remember where I put it, not there. I should have put it in my designs. That's where it belonged. Uh, so let's just do that. Let's do a file and an export rather than showing you the messiness of my machine, my uh, laptop here. We're going to put it in, go to Libby Van Trees. We're gonna go to my designs and we'll export it there. So now if I go to Finder and I go into my designs, there's my Beehive and my Bee exported. And if, again, if I did the, I, I export all of my designs onto my laptop as well. And then I just copy it over to my USB stick when I add that in. Um, so that is how we export. If you wanted to change the color of something in on your screen, um, when you come over here, when you hover over a color, you'll see that it changes color on the screen. So the little antenna are red. If I hover over the red, they change color. If I click on the color, it opens up my thread window and I can make those um, antenna, maybe I want them to be dark orange. So I'll say dark orange and say, okay. And now my antenna has changed to dark orange. Okay, so that's how we insert designs. Remember those sample designs are out there available for you to use and there are tons of them. So if you do actions, insert, and you go into samples, we're in butterflies and bugs right now. Um, but I can open up that Stitch 2 folder and you can see that there are all sorts of um, folders. If I open up holidays, there's all kinds of designs in there. So if I wanted to do the American flag, I just simply double click that and bring it in. So the samples are out there for you to use. I really hope you've enjoyed um, the presentation on 
how to use the Premiere Plus 2 software. It is a very rich software with lots and lots and lots of opportunities to create to your heart's content. We have a lot of classes available at Quilt Beginnings, and if you would like to learn more about your software, check those out. Have a great day. Thank you for listening.